the expert on it. Uh, there's probably more subtleties here, but Australia, the Australian government, thank you, Adam. That is, uh, that is uh, really, really uh, generous. Um, the Australian government, like most governments in the Western world, are very concerned about the power that uh, Facebook and Google have, and particularly in shaping the media message we all get. Uh, their concern is also the fact that journalism is in trouble. Uh, a lot of journalistic institutions, a lot of newspapers, a lot of media companies are shrinking. And in particular, they are shrinking their pure journalists. People are not interested in news. People are interested in commentary. And commentary, of course, doesn't require facts for most commentator. The people who actually go out there into the field and get facts, the journalists, there are just fewer and fewer of them. Fewer and fewer of them. And, you know, one of the, one of the sad things about what's going on in the New York Times is that the New York Times is one of the few institutions that has journalists all over the world trying to put together data. Now, the problem is we can't trust them anymore because they've lost a sense of objectivity. But there are not a lot of organizations that have anybody out there just getting the news, just getting information. So it's sad that the few organizations that are out there are losing money. The New York Times is making a lot of money these days. It's quite profitable in spite of what Donald Trump kept saying about them. They're actually quite profitable. Um, but they're so biased, it's hard to take them seriously. And, and of course, there are no replacements. Media, real media companies, again, not commentary. Not Tucker Carlson. The people who produce the news that Tucker Carlson can comment on. There are few and few of those people. And one of the problems, that one of the observations that the government of Australia has made and the European Union has made and some people in the United States have made is that we have these massive companies, Google and Facebook, for example, that consume news, if you will, in other words, they don't directly consume it, but they, well, Google does, and we'll talk about that, but they make it possible to distribute the news. That is, the news, the distribution networks. They distribute it by people sharing and people liking and people, people actually grabbing these news stories from the news websites and then sharing them, but, and, and the news is being read on Facebook's platform, not in the original uh, you know, page of the news organization. S and Facebook sells advertising on the page where the news is being read. And the newspaper that produced the news is getting, in Yiddish it's called bubkis. In other words, nothing. Right? So that's the situation we live in. And it's not a situation we should ignore. It's a situation with consequences. It's a situation that if you care about journalism, if you want to see more journalism, if you want to see the news media thrive, not shrink and disappear, it's an issue. It's an issue that people need to figure out how to solve. The question is who should solve it, not whether it should be solved. Right. So what you have is Google and Facebook making a huge amount of money off of advertising on news stories that are produced by other people. And the news media is not getting anything in return. It's not getting anything in return. Now, there's a lot of ways in which this could be solved. Free market ways. News organizations could say, you can't share this. We won't give you access to share it unless you give us a cut of the advertising revenue. The news organization could say, we're putting all our news behind a firewall like the New York Times does. 
And people can share it, but they can only share the headline. They can't get the story unless they pay up. Uh, so, and, and companies like Apple, the way they solve the problem is, at least a partial solution to it, is that they go to news uh, organizations and they say, we will carry your news on our Apple News app. And we will pay you for it. Or we will share the revenue from people who subscribe to the Apple News app. Right? So Apple is providing news organizations with revenue, although there's, there's a lot of complaints that <laughs> Apple, being Apple, is keeping most of it. But that's the marketplace. That's to be negotiated. And indeed, I think the New York Times, because it wasn't getting as much revenue as it would have liked from Apple, has withdrawn from Apple News. So if you go to Apple News, you're not going to get stories from the New York Times as part of Apple News. But these are all solutions that are, that are emerging in different ways in the marketplace. Again, the New York Times is super profitable. And it's put its entire newspaper basically behind a firewall. I believe that the Wall Street Journal is profitable. It too, you can't read the Wall Street Journal unless you buy a subscription. And if a, if a, if, when you share like a, a, a Wall Street Journal article, you don't get the article, you just get the headline. Substack is the same way. If I share a Substack story, you're only going to get the top of the story. You're not going to get the part that is only for subscribers. So there is, uh, what a Freeman says, an unbalanced relationship. There is an unbalanced relationship. There is uh, Google and Facebook have a lot more money and in a sense have a lot more power than other entities. Somebody says, is Facebook a monopoly? No, there is no such thing as a monopoly unless it's granted by the government. What makes Facebook a monopoly? It has 20% of the ad revenue, I think, in Australia. Uh, Google has a lot more of that. Um, it offers you, the customer, a product for free. What is it monopolizing? What is it monopolizing? Um, Twitter is competition. There's this new, this new app, app called Clubhouse, which is competition. It doesn't yet have a revenue model, but it'll develop one in its competition. What is it about Facebook that makes it a monopoly? Nothing. Zero. Zilch. It dominates the Facebook-like social media, okay? But it created that space. And if it did it without government help, without government support, without government subsidies, without government protection, why is it a monopoly? It's a good competitor who beat the competition and dominated the field. That should be celebrated. Facebook didn't do anything to Paula. I mean, you could argue that uh, Google and Apple did something to Paula, but not in order to defend Facebook. And Paula will come back once it figures out its hosting and everything else. There are other solutions in the marketplace that we have. But it was all market-driven. And yes, there might have been government influence in the background. That's a whole other topic. But then what you should be accusing, what you should be blaming is the market influence, not and the threat that uh, Facebook faces for antitrust and the threat that Google faces for antitrust and the threat that all these companies face from government regulation, the fact that governments are regulating. That's what we should be complaining about. And then, yes, when you have this threat, when you point a gun at a company and then tell them, ooh, you better behave, then they are going to behave. But that's not because they're a monopoly. That's because the government is pointing a gun at them. Paula is back. I tried to access Paula through my app, and I couldn't. But supposedly pa Paula is back. It's hosted on a different uh, cloud web service. Uh, hopefully it will build a robust network that will allow people to use it, in spite of the fact that some people don't like it. I don't know that, uh, you know, that Paula is a cancel culture phenomenon. I mean, we can, the whole Paula issue is, I think, a separate issue. Um, 
Let's see. Paula is a competitor. Yes, you're right. Paula is a competitor, for example, to Facebook. And there are others. There's Minds.com. There's, there used to be Gab. They're still around somewhere. There are others. They're just not as good. It's just not as good. But uh, uh, David says Paula is back on the web version. Apple, Google won't allow the app back on their stores. But I have the Paula app already. Why won't it work? Even though I can't download it, why won't it work on my computer? If I, if I delete it, then I can't get it back. But if I have it... All right. Where was I? Australia. So that's the problem. That's the issue. Facebook, Google, news media, and the relationship. And as I said, there's been negotiation. Now, countries are concerned about this. So what countries, what governments are trying to do is force, and I emphasize force, Google and Facebook to pay for the news that they use. Uh, and that's what Australia is trying to do. So Australia had a commission to look into the monopoly power that Facebook and Google have. Again, I don't think they have monopoly power. I, don't th I think that's a false definition of monopoly. I think monopoly should only be used to refer to a government-granted government granted monopoly. The fact that Google has 90% of search, I don't know how much they actually have, but let's say 90%, that does not make it a monopoly. I don't think, I don't think Standard Oil was a monopoly when it had 93% of the oil refining capacity of the United States. Those are not monopolies. There's no such thing as a monopoly in a free market or even in a semi-free market. Monopolies are government creatures, the post office. That's a monopoly. Market share does not denote monopoly. Government power, the use of a gun, the use of force, that is what denotes a monopoly. No, you can say bullshit, but that's not. You know, as, as, as an economist, I can tell you that's not what defines monopoly. And indeed, there is no definition of monopoly based on market share. How much? 50? 70? 90? What's the market? How do you define the market? Is it the market for search? Is it the market for online advertising? Is the market media? Is the market social media? BS. No force is being used. No force is being used. No coercion is being used. So, no, uh, these things are not monopoly. Uh, there is no objective definition of monopoly. This was a big issue for Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand considered the antitrust laws to be the most evil laws that were passed in the United States, the beginning of the end. The, the, well, not the most evil laws passed by the United States, but the beginning of the end of economic freedom in America. And she has a whole essay on how non-objective, non-objective, antitrust law is. Anyway, we'll go back backwards. So this is the challenge Australian government. It wants to rein in the power of these companies. And it wants to save its media companies. And they, have, they don't know how to do it. So they have a law now that they're passing, which is very complex and have multiple provisions, that is trying to get Facebook and Google to negotiate with the publishers. But if they don't succeed, the law creates a commission. And this commission will force, force again, Google and Facebook to pay for the news organizations. Now remember, the news organizations voluntarily give the news to Google and Facebook to share freely. 
Now, part of this, part of what Australia wants is that Google, if you search, let's say you search, um, I don't know, Australia, Facebook, Google, and news articles come up in the search. News articles come up in the search. And they want Google to pay every time those links are clicked on. And now that's ridiculous. The whole point Google says is these are not sponsored links. These are not paid for links. This is just a service we provide people searching. You can sponsor a link on the side. You can pay for certain search words. And there's also something called Google News. So what Google is doing is it has decided that preemptively, before the law is passed, it is going to negotiate with media companies in Australia to pay them to include their news stories, not in the search function, but in special sections of the website, including Google News, which is focused on news, where you can we just get the, the, the daily news come, up, come out. And they signed, they signed a, a big deal with News Corporation, the, the corporation that owns Fox, uh, but it also owns 50% of all the media in Australia is owned by News Corp. Uh, this is uh, Murdoch's company. Uh, but it also includes the Wall Journal, which is owned by Murdoch. And it, now they've got a deal where they will pay News Corp for it. And they're signing deals with other media companies. Who are they not going to sign these deals with? They won't sign them with very small media companies. So what this will ultimately do if they're forced to do it is destroy small media. And, and give a huge priority on Google News, on, on these news features, to the larger media companies. And they'll relegate the smaller media companies to, 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 to a lower place. And not because of this is a market phenomenon, but because this is what the regulation basically forces them to do. Now, Facebook has decided that it does not want to do that. That, it is, that this new law that Australia is thinking of passing is bad, that they object, uh, that they want to protest this. And what they've done preemptively is that they are now not allowing Australians to share Australian media on their Facebook pages. So in a sense, they're restricting the ability of Australians to use, to share news completely within Facebook's right. Uh, I don't think Australians are going to be happy about it. I think they'll either put pressure on the government to drop this bill or they'll put pressure on Facebook. We'll see who breaks first. It's not going to be consumer friendly, but it's also not going to be government friendly. And again, we'll see who breaks first. Um, there's already... So here's how fans solve this problem. Like, because this is big in the European Union. Germany had a bill, had a law that tried to solve this problem, forcing Google and Facebook and other social media platforms to do certain things. Uh, European courts ruled it unconstitutional. Fa uh, France has done it this way. What they're doing is they've got a special tax on social media. They've got a tax on social media. They take the revenue from that tax, and their money goes to media companies as a subsidy. Now that's horrible on multiple fronts. It makes media companies beholden to the government. The government gets to decide who gets what. The government gets to decide who's good media and who's bad media by subsidizing it. It's an awful, awful solution to it. Australia is trying to not tax the companies and redistribute the wealth. They're trying to force the companies to negotiate. And when they won't negotiate, they'll have a committee that decides what the fee should be. Central planning, regulation, controls, always backfire. 
The result is always worse than what they're trying to fix. They want their cake and eat it too. They want social media. They want the media. And they want the kind of media and the kind of social media that they prefer, not the ones that evolve through the marketplace. Microsoft is, I, Microsoft is probably not exempt from this, but Microsoft is a small player in the space. Indeed, one of the reasons I think Google... So in Australia, my understanding is Google opposed the bill but succumbed and negotiated these deals with the media. Microsoft supported the bill. They supported the bill because they figured it would hurt Google more than it would hurt them and they might be able to buy, get, some, get some market share as a consequence. This is the problem. The problem is that when government starts doing this, when government starts controlling these things, when it starts intervening in this way, you form pressure groups, different groups form, who have different interests, and they start fighting. They start fighting. So let the market work. Let these companies figure it out. That's my view. So I'm curious. Uh, we've got a bunch of Australians who usually are listening. I know Corey was here. Of course, Troy is, is Australian, and he's been very supportive of the show. I don't know if he's on live right now, um, but he's been on. I'm curious to find out on the chat maybe um, if my interpretation of what's going on in Australia is right and if my position on it makes sense. Uh, so I'm curious to find out from the Australians, if we have Australians here, um, if that is, uh, that is true. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. Uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like. Share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.